I have been doing a lot of stuff recently besides actually writing, so I decided to use some criteria I found on Reddit as a warm-up exercise. Hopefully this overview of my process will illustrate one way in which you can think about using non-musical sources to focus your ideas. To create options for a piece, you need to establish limitations. Choose a feature you want to focus on, in my case it was rhythm. The main specification was that the piece should exploit changing meters in some way. An optional task was to set music to the words of one of two given poems. I chose to set a melody to Frank O'Hara's Katie with the initial intention of letting the poem's natural rhythmic stresses guide the time changes. After reading it a couple of times, I instead decided that I wanted to write the rhythms as though it was being spoken rather than recited. So I decided to focus on the use of tuplets and irrational meters to cause brief falters in the pulse, serving to disrupt the established beat. In case you didn't know, an irrational meter is the adoption of a tuplet value as the new pulse, indicated by a time signature denominator like 12 or 10. They are generally used if a passage is too short to be regarded as a metric modulation. A metric modulation is the adoption of a new pulse based on a value relative to the old pulse, like switching to 3-4 time by using triplets in 4-4. Four four. Having established meter as the main focus, and having developed a plan for how to handle that parameter, I drafted the rhythms with no pitches. These were simply based on how I read O'Hara's phrases in my head. There was some minor tinkering so that I could ensure the transitions into irrational meter were seamless enough, but I didn't adhere to any specific system. At this stage, if you're still gathering raw materials to compose with, in most situations it doesn't necessarily matter if you don't have an elaborate plan. Secondly, I set pitches to the rhythms. This was completely intuitive, I just improvised the phrases on the guitar, line by line. Harmony is not a foreground feature in this piece and I wanted to maintain the slightly meandering conversational tone of the rhythmic writing, so I generally avoided implying any functional diatonic harmony, with some exceptions where I wanted to signal the end of a phrase. I did attempt to retain some conventional sense of phrasing, so as to make it clear how the rhythms act upon the melody. The main rule in my strategy was that each note should correspond to a syllable of the poem. Because of this, the length of the melody was limited to the length of the poem. To get around this, I used a technique known as isomalism, which is the repetition of a series of pitches in their original order, but in a new rhythmic variation. <laughs> Having decided the rhythm and melody, it was now time to add some harmonic context. There were two aims to this. The main goal was to clarify the underlying metric structure by using chords to accent the beats, but I also wanted to create a harmonic pacing that would give the melody a greater sense of cohesiveness. Note that this was a deliberate aesthetic choice. Compensating for a bad melody with harmony is generally not good practice. I chose chords by figuring out what triads the melody notes could fit within a given beat. My choices were largely determined by the voice leading between consecutive tones, and they were always triadic. At the end of phrases, I used perfect cadences to tonicize the final note, although, as there is no real functional harmony in the piece, these instances could be more accurately viewed as appropriations of the sonority of the 5-1 cadence, simply signifying that the phrase is complete rather than being an inevitability of the harmonic structure. In this sense, it is a sort of tonal uncanny valley. The bass line was constructed from these chords, and the chord inversions were simply determined by what I thought would give the bass line a distinctive and melodic character. I was careful about how I handled the rhythm of the accompaniment during the transitions in and out of irrational meters. Directly accenting the strong beats of the new meter sounded clunky and incoherent. So I figured out where the beat would land if we were still at the previous tempo, and tried to retain the established harmonic pacing whilst letting the melody sound as though it was falling out of step. This short piece can be looked at as having a binary form. It simply consists of two distinct sections. I created the B section and extended the structure by repeating the original melody in a different meter and tempo, automatically displacing the rhythmic stresses. The harmonies were written in the same way as the last section, but due to the rhythmic displacement of the melodic phrases, I chose different chords. As I mentioned before, I used an isomelic procedure to create the melody of the second section. 
There is actually some minor deviation from the original melody towards the end of the second variation, and this was actually an error I made when copying the melody into the new rhythm. I had harmonised it before I realised this, but I liked it, so I didn't change it. This isn't detrimental to the main idea, and I like it as a variation, so it's a happy accident. I like the result, but this vignette is far from being a finished piece. I didn't explore the irrational meter idea anywhere near as extremely as I could have, and I feel like after a few revisions it could have a lot more depth in this sense. That said, it is a success in that I achieved the aesthetic I imagined, so it's a good foundation to build on. I would run with the isomelic idea and produce increasingly extreme rhythmic distortions by gradually interjecting more irrational meters and more tuplets to interfere with the pulse until it is entirely deconstructed. I think I have more than enough melodic and harmonic material to work with just in this short binary piece. I got some ideas for how I would handle my harmony by listening to Stick Dance from Bela Bartok's Six Romanian Folk Dances, in which phrases are subtly reharmonized when repeated. How I handled form was influenced by Frank Zappa's Igor's Boogie, which is comprised of two contrasting through composed themes, each about 30 seconds in length. The form in my piece comes from the juxtaposition of two distinct rhythmic identities which are unified by a theme. Listening back to what I've made, some of its melodic character also reminds me very slightly of Conlon Nancaro's player piano study number 7. This was unintentional, but since Nancaro's piece is a great and much more densely polyrhythmic piece, it's worthy of a mention. I have linked to these pieces in the description. Hopefully some of this has been helpful and has offered at least some insight into what to do, or depending on your opinion, what not to do, both when trying to develop a basic idea into a piece and when drawing upon non-musical sources for ideas. Uh -huh.